G'day Trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist and I'm coming to you today with a product review of the Storm Pump of Sausalito, California. Stating the obvious, this is the sort of item you hope to really never use on your bicycle. This device, Gadget, has been around for a couple of years and it caught my interest at the Sea Otter Show. In fact, you can check out my video where I the owners and founders of this company talk about the specs in detail but basically you can attach this device to one part of your bicycle that in my opinion is well it's great if you like potentially contracting a bad disease from eating too much cow and what I mean is, you've got your water bottle cages here, and a lot of modern bikes, for the gravelly roads less travelled, they have a third bottle cage mount, which I like to call the cow sh catcher position. You think about it, you ride some of these crazy dirt roads, fields, and cows might even tromp when I've crossed them, and well, hello, drink the bottle, bloody hell, you get sick. So I usually don't utilise that position whatsoever, but it is useful in this situation for attaching a storm pump. So, without further gas bagging, let's crack open the box and get a closer look. Let's crack open the lid and I will talk about these details as I handle the pump in front of the camera. Actually, look at this piece here. We hope you don't get it flat, but if you do, we believe storm pump is the best tool to get you moving down the road quickly. Now, there is the storm pump and this one is equipped with the frame mount, which I alluded to a moment ago, will mount into the third bottle case position. So I'll whack this alongside the box. So you can see here, machined aluminum construction, or aluminum construction if you prefer. And basically you've got right here, let's actually remove this strap so we can get a closer look. So this is the strap system that obviously holds the storm pump to the frame mount. Very easy to remove. So this part here, this is the high volume pump of body. And then you have down here stainless steel push to connect fittings. And right here, there is a center stowage compartment. I'll pop that in a minute so we can get a closer look. Integrated air filtration system and the high quality hook and loop safety strap, which there is again, and the composite frame dock, which is the fancy word for the frame mount. So before I start playing around with the pump, etc., let's throw it onto the gram scale to see how much weight we're gonna to be toting around on the bicycle. Onto the scale, 192 grams, the mount, composite mount, 212 grams. The strap, retention strap, 217 grams. And the package also included these little, looks like a wedge of some kind. So we'll throw those on. I may not use those, obviously. So 219 point, sorry, 220 grams. Now this little device has support for Presta and Schrader, as you can see there. So we pop that off and this nice little air inflation hose, for lack of a better term. What do they call it? It's called the durable flexible hose. Okay, that's a better terminology than what I'm banging on about. So there you go. Currently the pump is supporting Presta Schrader at the other end. So it's very simple. You just unscrew, flip around, and you've got yourself support for Schrader, Schrader. Nice. Let's check out the onboard storage. So it's like a little plug, almost like a bar end plug for your handlebar actually. And well, it's quite a decent amount of room inside. Let's put my finger in there. Look at that. The <laughs> no rude comments, please. The index finger bottoms out just after the knuckle. So you could stick all sorts of sundry items inside there, whatever your into. Let's try the pump in a pretend sort of real world scenario. This is a former review pair of wheels by Far Sports. In fact, you can check out my fantastic review of this wheel set, which is fantastic. Link in the description below. It's very flat. 
Now the bead has not been broken, so I'm not gonna be testing out if this thing can pop ties because hello, it's not gonna pop ties. You need a much bigger pump than that. But obviously, it's gonna be for roadside repairs. So let's try inflating this tire on this hard surface, and then we'll do another inflation test on soft ground and see how we go. We're gonna thread it on. So this is balancing precariously whilst I try and keep everything in focus here. So I know people are gonna say, hey, the disadvantage there is you could potentially remove the valve core. That is very true. So we'll be careful when we remove this little setup. Let's make sure it's tight. Yep. Let's try pumping the pump and hopefully my camera stays in focus. This is almost like using a bass drum pedal for those drummers out there watching the video. Or the hi-hat pedal. Now, is it inflating? Yes, it is, quite nicely. We're gonna swap feet here. You might be left-footed or right-footed. This thing is coming up the pressure real nice. Much better than one of those little hand pumps where you stand by the side of the road. And if you're a bloke, it looks a bit dodgy. You know what I'm talking about. Just so you know, folks, Jeff is inflating a tire, not the other activity. We'll do about 10 more strokes. I should have counted the strokes here. That is really well inflated. Let's make sure there's some focus here. Now you can see my thumb depressing, hopefully. This tire is at least, at least 35 PSI. I know this fuel test pretty well, so that is nice. Now let's try and inflate on a less than even surface. Now let's try and inflate on these wood chips. It's pretty unstable as you can see, simulating a crappy ass road or something like that. Completely flat tire, right? Let's go here. I didn't record how many strokes then. Decent amount. Let's mess it up again. Whoops, lost a bit of footing, but that's an accurate demonstration. Crap all over the pump. Yeah, the body of the pump gets pretty warm. Ton of air pressure, so no wuck and furries. If the neighbors are watching this, they're probably thinking, what the f is this guy up to? Anyway, so on some grass here. It's a bit dodgy, not the most level of surfaces. Let's try it out. Completely flat tire. Whoop. All right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 40 strokes with the left foot. Needs more air. Let's swap footsies. 60. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighty rapido strokes. Make sure that's in focus. Yeah, good amount of air pressure. Thus far, I'm thinking the storm pump is a bit of a winner. Now it's time to demonstrate how the storm pump attaches to the frame mount, but first we want to wrap up the inflation hose and it sits nicely on its little perch. Boom, bloody sweet. Now, this is a directional mount. Hopefully you can see that in the light there. The stomp pump sits up that way, like this orientation. First of all, you have to compress it a little bit. Most of the way, actually. All right, it's done. Now, see the little leggies there? They pop in to the base, just like that, and then, the top part, those little liggies, we're going to call them here. So bottom, top, then just let go of the pressure on the pump and bobs your uncle. There you go. It's in place. And obviously this part here mounts to your frame. In this case, right over there. So before I mount this piece to the frame, let's demonstrate the strap. A very simple Velcro strap supplied by Stomp Pump to make sure this little device does not get ejected from the frame because we know that these gravelly roads can be very bumpy at times. Really simple. 
you should all know how Velcro works. Pull it nice and tight. Good one. That should be very secure. Install the mounting bracket. Don't forget, right way up. So like that, remove your frame bolts. Attach the storm pump. So press a little bit, pop into place in the bottom part of the mount and in the top part of the mount. There you go, you wanna feel and hear that click. A little bit of wiggle there. So now I'll make sure it's securely held with the included strap. It will wiggle just a smidge, but that is not going to let loose anywhere. And there is your side profile. You've seen my extensive demonstration and how this pump works, but how did it hold up mounted beneath my bicycle? Well, it has been installed to my T-Lab X3.22 former review bike for some time, including five days of the Oregon Trail gravel grinder. That event features all manner of madness, including many rough and dodgy roads through the Cascade Mountains. Not once did the pump become dislodged, and it even survived the trip from Florida to Oregon and back inside my Evoke Road Bike Bag Pro case with a bit of a poke around courtesy of TSA. In summary, the Stomp Pump is very well made, durable, and with the frame mounting option, a perfect spot to install a legit pump versus a microscopic hand pump. The Stomp Pump is rated to 60 PSI, which isn't super high, but it will cover just about every gravel bike. And in the case of my road tubeless riding experiences, get me up to pressure for pavement riding at almost my perfect pressure. I generally run about 60 to 65 PSI on the road. When you compare a small mini pump, the effort is much less and you utilize leg muscles, which are more efficient than the avian type arms I happen to possess. Roadie riders may need to stick with a different pump or CO2 cartridges as 60 PSI is not going to be high enough for many road riders, especially if they're still running tubes. Stomp Pump will set you back about US $70 on Amazon and if you utilize the link below to buy, Gravel Cyclist gets a little kickback at no cost to you. So there you have it, my review of the Storm Pump of Sausalito, California. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cycles YouTube channel for product reviews such as this. No bull arama gravel bike reviews, ride experience videos, and other madness. <laughs> As all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.